Hi, and uh, welcome to uh, another of FB Live sessions with Baijus. Uh, I am Himanshu, and today we are going to discuss uh, uh, the three uh, topics of physics which are usually taught together. Uh, we have uh, center of mass, and then we have conservation of linear momentum, and then we have uh, collisions. Okay. So I so this is a 15 minute session. So let me uh, give you a uh, heads up that I won't be covering, of course, topics in detail. What I'll be going through, uh, going to do in this session is, I'll just be giving a brief idea about what all things are to be learned and where you should be a little careful, what you should uh, focus on, or some important concepts, uh, you know, should so that you have that in in your mind when you're going through this chapter properly. Okay. So center of mass. So what, what is center of mass? So it turns out that whenever you have an object with, with a certain mass and there are different forces acting on it, you can assume or you can uh, take the entire mass of that object, which is an enlarged object, to be concentrated at a point, right? And if you apply all the forces at that point, the acceleration of the point would be same as the, as the acceleration that, that all the forces together would produce. So it's very simple. Uh, that's the idea of center of mass. Uh, that that's the point. So so the questions of center of mass are questions where you are supposed to find that point. Okay, in an object where that point is. That point need not be located in the object. Can also be located outside the object. Where is that point which I am calling a center of mass? Uh, where if I consider all the mass to be concentrated, right? It would have uh, the same uh, dynamics in a way, right? Now. To, to, to find the location of a point, what, what is the first thing that you need to know, right? So to find the location of anything, the very first thing which you need to know is a, is a coordinate axis, right? It's some direction, it's an origin. So the first thing you do in a, in a center of mass problem is you find an origin, okay? This is the point or this is the, my origin and from here I'm going to find the, the, the x value and the y value of my center of mass, right? What is the x coordinate and what is the y coordinate? Now, how do you do that? So the x coordinate of the center of mass is given by the formula m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 plus blah, 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 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 up to whatever masses you have. Now, this is in the case when you have discrete masses. So your system is composed of four, five, six, seven, eight mass, Right? They're discrete point masses and you want to find which is that point where I can consider this whole mass to be concentrated. You use this formula x equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 plus m4 x4 and it keeps on going uh, till whatever uh, masses you have divided by the total number of mass that you have there. Okay. And similarly you find the y coordinate. So now y coordinate is equal to m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3 blah 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 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 so on. So on. That's how you find the center of mass. Now, what? But remember, these this x and y are the coordinates from a chosen uh, coordinate system or from a chosen point of origin, right? So uh, you might solve a problem, and your other friend might solve a problem, and you might both choose different coordinates, but the location would be the same within the object or wherever it is with respect to the object, right? So that's how you solve a problem of uh, center of mass when the masses are discrete. Now, the next level comes when you have a continuous distribution of mass, like, like most of the objects we are acquainted with in our daily lives are, are distributed mass, right? When you have a distributed mass, you do basically the same thing, but now you have to integrate because you, are taking, take, you have taken a small mass, uh, elemental mass, and then you're saying that this elemental mass is at a distance of x from the origin, so x times of whatever that mass is, capital M by the volume divided into, in, into the volume of that piece. So the formula which you get is 1 by m into integration of the dx, right? Whatever that uh, dm times dx or m times dx, whatever that mass is, and then you just integrate it all through the um, all through that axis, and you find the center of mass. So these are the kind of things that you do in center of mass. So there's nothing extraordinary to be to be learned in in the chapter of center of mass. So there sometimes you get questions where, uh, like for example, you have a sphere and uh, uh, you have to find the center for for first thing, like before this, you need to know is that if you have a sphere, the center of mass of any uniformly distributed symmetrical uh, object will always be at the center, right? So if you have a ring, the center of mass is at the center of the ring. If you have a disc, the center of mass is at the center of the disc. If you have a sphere, the center of mass is at the center of the sphere, okay? But let's say you have a sphere and some portion of the sphere in another spherical form has been cut out and then now you are asked to find the center of mass. 
it becomes very difficult to integrate right uh, to solve this problem so what we do is we apply a trick where we say that uh, let's consider the whole sphere to be a full mass and we, i'd find the center of mass which will be the center itself and then i would replace that portion which is empty by a negative mass now this is not a high level physics concept of negative mass it's just a mathematical concept we have it's just a trick Let, let's say there were a negative mass there minus m and you would find the center of mass of that mass and the center of mass of the whole thing you've already found and then you find the center of mass of the two things which you have found again okay that's how you find the center of mass of objects now as you move from center of mass uh, towards conservation of linear momentum uh, you need to understand that what is conservation of linear momentum first of all so if you have a system and in physics many times i see the students make mistake uh, in uh, in understanding what a system is a system can be anything depending on what you have defined it to be okay so be very clear that this is my system so i can analyze the behavior of moon taking moon as a system and i can analyze the behavior of earth and moon taking earth and moon together as a system right so so it's very important and to be clear with what is your system so once you're clear with what is your system you if you find that there are no external forces acting your system in your system then you can be sure that uh, the linear momentum will be conserved it means the momentum before is equal to momentum after that is pi is equal to pf right and if that happens right uh, that is that is if you have no force you are going to have no acceleration of the center of mass so now you might have a system in which there are two or three or four particles or different objects where they are doing all kinds of things but if there is no external force in the whole system then you can say that the center of mass would have a zero acceleration okay because it is as if there is no force acting on on a point where we can consider all the mass to be concentrated okay and the and the the, the linear momentum of the whole system will be conserved so there are a lot of uh, problems in physics which you get where uh, where you can apply the concept of conservation of linear momentum usually i find that uh, in je whenever i see a question in which there are two entities and both the entities are moving for example a block sliding on a uh, on an inclined plane i see the block is also going down and the inclined plane is also sliding back because of newton's third law they both are applying force on each other and let's say it's a frictionless ground or something then i see that if i take both of them to be a system then i know that there is no external force on these two together right there's no external force they are applying force on each other but all the internal forces always cancel each other because whenever you apply a force on an object the object applies an equal force back to you because of newton's third law right so so because of that if if i consider both of them to be a system i can apply the law of conservation of uh, momentum or i can simply say that the center of mass will not change its position the center of mass is always going to be at the same point right so um that's the idea uh, uh, you can you know uh, that's the basic core for example if whenever you get a question in physics i mean when you have solved enough question you should always be able to tell what kind of concept i'm going to apply to solve this question i mean the same question can be solved using the method of energy or maybe you can also solve it using force for example the sphere and the cutout question which i told you could also be solved using integration but i don't do that because there's an easier method and this is a thing which would not appear to you just by like learning it in a classroom this is something you you solve a lot of problems and then you develop an intuition for it so you have to keep solving more and more problems otherwise you won't be able to ever come to a stage where you can just tell that this is what i have to do in this problem right so this is this is a new, this is the idea which i have in mind whenever i see two objects which are moving relative to each other and i find that there is no friction there is no external force then i can apply the conservation of linear momentum sometimes people are uh, people feel really quick i mean they 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 just see two things moving and they want to apply a conservation of linear momentum and questions of je try to trick you uh, uh, into into finding a wrong solution because uh, uh, because people tend to forget that there has to be zero external force okay so make sure that the external force is always zero like is that is the force anything which is out coming out, uh, from outside to your system okay now let's conservation of linear momentum it's a very simple concept again the third thing which we uh, i wanted to just uh, briefly uh, touch upon was collisions okay so in 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 physics uh, of 11th and 12th which we learn uh, the collision uh, that we deal with are collisions of spherical objects so spherical objects they collide okay and in that collision 
there are two things which we need to be really careful about okay there is momentum and there is energy okay so the thing about momentum is when the collision happens right uh, there might be an external force but see change in momentum is f times delta t if the delta t is very very small tending to zero then we can for a moment ignore an external force now this goes against what i just told you that momentum is conserved only when there is no external force but when there is an external force but your time is extremely small right then you can think as if like two things collided but like just before collision and just be after collision their momentum will be same because delta t is tending to zero and that's the idea we use to say that in any collision the linear momentum is always conserved so uh, you must have you are going to or maybe you have learned that there are different kinds of collision there's an elastic collision there's inelastic collision there's perfectly inelastic collision all these kinds of collisions are there but in all kinds of collision the and the the linear momentum is always conserved okay now whether the energy is conserved or not that's a different question so therefore that we have to understand that any collision is like two springs hitting each other so they they compress and then they elongate so if when they compress it's fine when they elongate if they elongate back to the same original length then we can say that there is no extra energy loss jitna energy diya utna we got it back right so there is no energy loss there but it might so happen that there's some material which are behaving like a, a, a spring which when you compress you give it some energy but they don't compress uh, they don't ex uh, expand back to the original length it means that some energy got used in bending them or like uh, changing their mean uh, length right so in that case what happens kinetic energy doesn't get uh, conserved in the sense that the initial kinetic energy is not equal to the final kinetic energy final kinetic energy is less than the initial kinetic energy because some energy got used in uh, uh, you know in 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 that spring so the analogy is that if two objects are colliding so when they collide they they bend for for some time right they uh, they deform for some time for for a very small time and if they come back in the in the way that they they regain their original shape without any uh, without using any energy right in that case kinetic energy initial equals to kinetic energy final and this is called elastic collision okay and when this doesn't happen we call it an ela inelastic collision and when it so happens that if you two two objects are colliding and they're colliding in a way that after collision they stick to each other and they move they just stick to each other that kind of collision is called perfectly inelastic collision okay so there are only two things which you need to take into consideration while talking about collisions kinetic energy and momentum momentum is always conserved initial momentum is always equal to final momentum and energy initial energy is equal to final kinetic energy when you have elastic collision in elastic collision you can't say okay in elastic collision it will not be uh, equal okay now there's another term called uh, coefficient of restitution in collisions coefficient of restitution is basically uh, uh, it's just a ratio of velocity of separation or relative velocity of separation by relative velocity of approach okay so it's a fascinating thing this coefficient of restitution was found out by newton and he said that no matter uh, what kind of collision you have be it elastic inelastic or whatever or perfectly inelastic you would find that uh, the ratio of the velo relative velocity of separation by the relative velocity of approach that ratio is always a constant okay that constant equals to 1 in case of uh, inelastic collision okay and in inelastic collision that can be anything uh, other than 1 right uh, it can be anything from 0 to 1 now like uh, there are a bunch of formulas there's two ways to learn collisions i've seen students they just try to mug up all the different kinds of formulae um, for like the, the final momentum formula the, this formula that formula i personally don't uh, recommend doing doing that because you won't remember it and uh, if you just mess up with a single uh, variable there the entire answer would get lost and you're not understanding anything so all you have to do is you have to just apply initial momentum equals to final momentum all the time and initial kinetic energy equals to final final kinetic energy when you have an elastic collision that's all you have got to do um, apart from that in, in collision so this i was talking about a head-on collision you can also have an oblique collision in which the the things which are colliding they're like they need not come along the same line this might be going here this might be going here and they might collide okay in that case what you do the point where they have collided there you draw a common tangent to them okay 
and the line perpendicular to that common tangent basically the line joining the centers of those spheres because we are talking about spheres along that sphere everything is valid along that sphere initial uh, linear momentum is equal to final linear, linear momentum along that line if it is an elastic collision initial kinetic energy but kinetic energy anyway not depending on the line I'm saying along that line if you want to find the coefficient of restitution for those two uh, two balls then you will have to find it along that line of impact okay uh, in the perpendicular direction their momentums have not changed right so if a ball was carrying uh, some momentum in the perpendicular direction even after collision will have the same momentum but in the in the direction of line of impact they can exchange their momentums but the total momentum change will be zero initial momentum will be equal to final momentum so these are the certain ideas that you need to know about uh, the chapters of uh, center of mass uh, conservation of uh, linear momentum and uh, collisions now i know that a 15 minute session doesn't even do a one person justice to what you actually need to learn uh, in these topics so what i've tried to do here is i've just tried to briefly tell you what all things are there uh, in these topics and uh, uh, i would suggest that you pay good atten attention to these because see linear of uh, conservation of linear momentum is a concept which which you you you, you can solve problems of electrostatics you can solve problems of uh, like even further physics like magnetism also you can have you can get a problem where you, where you can apply the concept of conservation of linear momentum so it's not like something which is uh, confined only to mechanics in fact all the portions all the parts of mechanics are really important because mechanics is something which like uh, covers everything right so even when you go to 12th and if you have not learned mechanics really well you won't be able to solve a problem of electrostatics okay okay if you don't know electrostatics you can still solve a mechanics problem but if you don't know mechanics you won't be able to solve an electrostatic problem so how objects behave how force behave is one of the most fundamental things right it's 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 the first principle of a lot of physics that we do even the rocket propulsion is just pure mechanics okay we can we can send a a, a satellite using just f equals to ma and these mechanic um, mechanics rule that you are learning and uh, and these ideas so so in the end of this uh, session of mechanics you 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 you'd be introduced to this giant called rotational mechanics now, rotational mechanics is not difficult i wouldn't say difficult but it's really vast so <coughs> if you're not really aware of all the concepts that are preceding it you'd get really confused okay so i hope now that you're in 11th standard and you have already had like two three months of four months of uh, training into um, uh into uh, preparation for je i hope you are learning to appreciate that there there are no portions of physics that you can skip because if you skip something you won't go ahead it's not like you 10 standard anymore where you can skip a couple of chapters and it's fine and then you learn a couple of chapters that's fine it doesn't work like that here so if you if you just if you you can't you can't jump concepts every concept is built upon another concepts so the chapters are placed in such a way that all the concepts are built upon each other okay so in that sense uh, conservation of linear momentum idea of center of mass and collisions these are really really important uh, concepts okay and uh, i have seen that at least one question from these topics would be there in any exam and sometimes people give comprehensions on uh, on collisions okay and uh, like they can be more than two collisions they can be collision of three balls also they have i've seen questions of that sort also so it all depends on how many questions you solve from these right and uh, then you move on to the next topic which is rotational mechanics so i hope that was uh, uh, quite a bit helpful to you i see that uh, we have a question from chandan pg chandan pg does an atom has center of mass of course anything that has mass would have a center of mass an atom would also have a center of mass uh, but that is a very newtonian concept uh I, I in the sense that when you go to a level of atom the world of an atom is very weird it's uh, that's why we you must have heard that we use the word quantum mechanics all the time so the the way things work there are is that they work in this quantum mechanical sense uh and this concept of center of mass is a very newtonian concept so i'm not sure whether you can honestly say or you can like you know say that uh, with with precision that that center of mass does it does have a center of mass but if you consider an atom to be a very newtonian atom in the sense that the atom which follows the laws of newton 
then it does it would have uh, a center of mass Chandan is also asking if I choose the universe as a system is it possible to find the center of mass I think it should be possible to find the center of mass but again see <coughs> Chandan uh, you are asking good questions but uh, your questions are uh, I used to ask these kind of questions when I was studying physics for the first time but uh, let me tell you that you are learning ABCD right now and you are asking me to explain you the a passage written in one of the Shakespearean play okay I mean it makes sense when you when you learn Shakespeare but at the time when you're learning ABCD you should focus on ABCD and even if I tell you yes okay fine there is a center of mass to the universe now what would you do with it it's just a story for you right I mean you it's not it's not a, it's not a knowledge that you've earned right you if you start questioning me okay why does it have a center of mass I say okay because of this reason why does that happen that's because of this reason it'll take us decades to sit together and answer this question does this universe has a center of mass what is the definition of center of mass what do you mean by universe what are the limits of the universe you will have to learn special theory of relativity, theory of relativity. you have to learn general theory of relativity you will have to learn string theory perhaps to answer this very question if you chase it to the very end with a doubt so if you ask a question like this i can totally answer that whether uh, an atom has center of mass or not but it, what will it be for you it's it's not your intellectual knowledge it's just a story I mean, it's, it's as good as I am I mean, like JK Rowling writing a story for Harry Potter. I mean, these this thing happened, this happened. Oh, did Dumbledore do this? Yeah, he did. Okay, fine, cool. So it's not an intellectual truth for you, right? It's it's just a story. So, I mean, these questions are good and, and it's very good to have confusions and these kind of questions. But you should also have to understand that these questions take a lot of time uh, and a lot of courage, in fact. To, to to really get to the answer to because everybody would tell you a story about it because nobody would basically know maybe even a even if you go to a theoretical physicist uh, who who's really hardcore into uh, into cosmology he might tell you certain things you won't get it because you need to have like a plethora of knowledge before you can even understand what he's saying right and that you have to earn by like asking questions and which you're doing so I really like that okay uh, so that was a short session on uh, center of mass, conservation of linear momentum and collisions. Okay, I hope this was helpful and you keep posting your questions and keep watching us live. Uh, I'd see you on Thursday and uh, please go check out our YouTube channel. As I say, uh, we keep updating videos there and I think you'd like sub subscribe to our channel and download our app and check out the videos that we have made. We use fancy animation and all kinds sorts of things to, to make the concepts really really clear and uh, crisp and firm uh, in your minds okay thank you